you ready for, are you ready for? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to break down the Citadel's option offense today. And I know you've got a base knowledge from your three years at the Citadel. I, I understand offense and I understand defense. <laughs> so very base knowledge. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to build on that a little bit today. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take you to the, to the screen here and, and show you some option offense. Okay. When I put my glasses on. <laughs> okay. You know, the option offense, there's really three phases that you've got to defend. You've got to defend the dive phase, the quarterback phase, and the pitch phase. Okay. And you've got to defend these offenses from the inside out because if you'll, if you'll give them the dive, they'll hand that ball off and they'll take three yards of play and they'll be happy to go for it on fourth and one. So as you see here with the dive phase, they're going to read typically a defensive lineman. So they're going to read this defensive end here. And if there's enough space, they'll hand it off to the fullback and they'll take a, a chunk of yardage. If you overcompensate and you take away the dive phase, okay, then they'll get the ball on the perimeter. Yeah. And the next defender becomes the pitch phase, the pitch read. And then the quarterback will make a decision to distribute the ball on the perimeter and get on the edge of your defense. So and that's how they get the yardage. That's how they get the yardage. It's, uh, you know, it's the idea is, you know, if they can not block defenders at the point of attack and then read them, then, you know, they've, they've got blockers up to the second level of your defense and, um, they feel that they have an advantage that way. So I have always noticed that they do that that late pass, like in that last little video clip that you were showing, where they yeah. do throw it off to the perimeter yeah. uh, player, and uh, and it does seem to be that that's um, where the defense is vulnerable at that moment, right? To to be able to get that player before they can make a run for it. That's right. So they make all their decisions usually based on numbers, angles, and grass. So they'll count how many players you have in the box and see if they like the angles to block those players. And when in doubt, they'll always go to the, to the grass and the space that you're talking about on the perimeter. So. Can I ask just a couple other questions? One, I'm curious about how important the aerial view is of a game. Um, I know that uh, I'm an LSU grad. And I really, Congratulations. yeah, so today, this year was a great year for LSU, but I did notice they kept cutting to the guys uh, up and doing the calls uh, or mm -hmm. giving guidance to the coach from the aerial perspective. Right. So how important is that to a coach? It, it's important. And typically the coordinators will be up in the box so they can, you know, see the game from a big picture standpoint and make decisions you know, from one series to the next series, you know, as far as what the strategy might be and how it might change. I did notice that after the first uh, quarter that you can tell that the, whatever strategy the coaches were using, and I guess that's largely based on the videos that they've watched. Mm -hmm. um, some coaches can counter act that strategy like they quickly can see that strategy at work and then counteract it and you see this tap you know you'll see it after the half you'll see it in the second quarter too just that they've learned okay this is how they're going to respond and uh so i guess i say that to say i realize you know coaching makes a lot of difference in these games <laughs> right right it's important to have a plan b and to be able to change your plan you know with football, there's not a like a defensive play that can take everything away. You know, if there was, we would all be running yeah, it. We'd be doing so it. Mm -hmm. You really have to pick and choose. Okay, we're going to take this away or this away, and you base those decisions based on a, a team's tendencies and what they're having success with. You know? And is it true that every year the team has a different set of strengths as a team? Yeah, as your person. Yes, as, as your personnel changes, you know, so does some of your schemes and your plans and. You know, we got to get the ball to this guy or that guy or defensively. We want to free up this defender to, you know, really let his athleticism show and, and make plays for us. 
I really have been thinking a lot about the senior spring sport players because mm -hmm. they had worked so hard to prepare for a season that didn't materialize. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what are, what's what's a coach say uh, when when things like we're experiencing happen? Yeah, it's really hard because you know we've never experienced anything like this as an athlete. Mm -hmm. In the post World War, yeah, too, and so we haven't experienced anything like this. So I really, it, you really got to sympathize for these kids, um, but also encourage them. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. You know that that you know we've got to adapt, improvise, and overcome. And when we can play football again, I know you know we'll make sure our kids are ready and and they're excited and they're anxious to play. But I I, I certainly feel for those spring sport athletes who didn't have the opportunity to showcase their skills and they work so hard to prepare for it. Yeah. yeah. I have been really thinking a lot about them and thinking about just that, um, you know, the importance of staying of focused on uh, accepting that this is what it is and to be able to shift our shift gears and to be able to grab onto whatever it is next and how important it is for our, and I know this is true for myself that because it will end. And then who do we want to be when it ends? Uh, and what is going to be our story about this time that we were in quarantine? What's the story that's unfolding uh, personally about ourselves and, uh, and what we did to, you know, to stay committed to whatever our goals are. And then when we look back at this time, you know, what do we say? What will be that story? Uh, so I do think there is some real power in mentally um, imagining, okay, it's going to pass. And then what's my life going to look like? What's, what are my goals? Where am I going to be in terms of my goals? And, and, and yeah. I know that's hard because there is real loss right now yeah. in, in what we had hoped uh, would be happening uh, instead what we're faced with. Right. And, but who we are when this is all done is it's going to be re a result of our habits today you know and, and what we're doing today and mm -hmm. I know our kids are working hard at home and you know in the transition to online learning and all that but we're also pushing them to, to work out and eat right and and when we do come back you know it will be a, a result of our habits you yeah know? Mm -hmm. but so. yeah I agree and actually I think all that the physical aspects um, that's one of the things student athletes have is a real benefit from that. I mean, because that's a great stress reliever. I mean, there's so many good uh, parts of of their um, the physical aspects of their sport that that really help um, in that focus needed to to shift to remote learning in this case. Uh, right. uh, so you know, it, it's not uh, it's not staying keeping hold of those things during this, mm -hmm. it's going to benefit them in the middle of it and after it. So I agree, right. that's great, great guidance. Yeah, we really, I mean, we really miss having our, our student athletes here. <laughs> yes. And you know, the, uh, you know we're, we're doing football class like this with them now a couple times a week. And that's the best part of our day, you know, just being able to still connect with them and see their face and talk football and just give them a little bit of the football that they're starving for. Yeah. You know, so when, when the time comes for us to return to the field that we'll, we'll be ready. And the Citadel is our first, is our opening game? The Citadel is our opening game. So okay. you've, ready, you've got the game plan. You're ready for <laughs> September 4th. I've watched the tape. Uh, as yeah. they say, I've got the game plan. So I'll be watching to see how we That's respond right. uh, when we uh, go to the field in the fall. So right. thanks for being with me today, Coach. You're welcome, President Bush. It's a pleasure.